It's September. <laughs> and all thoughts. Oh, good grief, that's terrible. All thoughts of an Indian summer have just disappeared. Just two weeks ago, it was the August bank holiday, and the weather was amazing. Look at it out there now, it's horrible. But I can't wait, because next week we're going on holiday. We're going on a family holiday. It's not a fishing holiday, it's a family holiday. But it's me, I can't go anywhere, not even to the shops without sticking a rod in the back of the car, just in case I get a chance to go fishing. So, I'm gonna share with you my top tips on what to pack on a family holiday if you're taking a bit of fishing tackle with you. It's horrible out there. Okay, so holiday is just around the corner. You've got a little bit of space in your holiday bag to pack some fishing tackle. I think the first thing to say is be realistic. All the photos that you see online and in the magazines of people in sunshine and shorts holding up massive fish, it's like anywhere, that is the pick of the bunch. If you're going on holiday to a warm climate, it doesn't necessarily guarantee you a sea or a lake or a river full of massive fish. And in my experience, having traveled to some incredible places around the world, actually what we're gonna find is probably quite a lot of small fish. Um, in some areas, it might not be an awful lot of fish either. So just, just be very realistic about what it is that you're gonna go and achieve. Your time is gonna be limited. It is your family holiday after all. Um, so grabbing an hour or two um, before the family get out of bed or something like that or, or last thing in the evening is the prime time to go and do this. Plus, first thing and last thing, it's also a great time for fishing as well. Okay, so starting with the big stuff, with a fishing rod. If you can get hold of, either buy one or beg, borrow, steal or borrow as I have done for about the last 10 years, um, a specialist travel fishing rod, that's perfect. Um, a telescopic rod is great, but these travel fishing rods are just, the, the quality of, the, of them is just fantastic. They typically come in a tube of about this size. That'll pack into most suitcases or holders or something like that. They're pretty sturdy, so they're gonna protect what's in there. And the quality of the rods, we'll put this little spinning rod together and it's absolutely brilliant. Full cork handle, great reel seat. You know, it, it fishes as well as any other rod going. So if you can, get your hands on one of those. Next then is of course the reel. You're gonna pick a reel that's of a suitable size, so a spinning reel or your feeder fishing reel or something like that will be absolutely fine. For me, I found the kind of a, a nice compromised line because I'm not taking lots of different reels or even more than one spool. A nice compromised line on here is a 20 pound braid. It's what I use for my lure fishing. It's really, really fine. So if I'm doing a bit of lure fishing, it's perfect for that, it's made for the job. But because the line is so fine, I can add on a very light line leader, eight pound, three pounds if necessary, and then I can go and have some fun catching the small and colorful fish that look like they belong in, a, in an aquarium or something like that, that are pretty abundant around most of the spots that you find. Mullet, that sort of thing. So one of these reels, some 20 pound braid on there if you've got it, and then I've got a couple of spools of lines. So there's this line that's appropriate for my lure fishing, so some stuff that's about 15 pound, and then some much lighter stuff, like I say, if I'm fishing for just the small fish. Float fishing, I would suggest, is probably the best way to go. Like I say, it tends to be fishing almost under your feet on little sort of rocky outcrops just at the edge of the beach where you might be staying, something like that. A couple of these floats, they're called loafers or chubbers. Um, they take uh, they take a few large split shots, so take your box of split shot with you, and they're fixed top and bottom with some float rubbers. You can change the depth that you're fishing at, but typically the fish feed very close into the edge and uh, quite high in the water. Some hooks. Again, if you're a coarse fisherman, you'll have this in your box. For the slightly larger stuff, I've got a pack of size six hooks, and then probably what I'll end up using for the small and colorful things is just a pack of little small size 10 hooks, all right? So between those two things, you'll catch most of what's swimming around in front of you. You're not gonna take your massive tackle box, your wheelbarrows or anything like that with you. So, grab a waterproof, fairly rigid container and start to fill it up. I've got a couple of spools of line gone in there, my weights gone in there, my floats, my hooks. Take a pair of scissors, save your teeth, and you are traveling, so a knife's not such a good idea. Take a pair of scissors with you. And then I can't go fishing abroad without taking a couple of lures with me. Um, you will from time to time come across um, really great, exciting predatory fish around the reefs and bits and pieces. Um, 
So I tend to chuck in, I, I always take this one with me. Um, I've got fond memories of early one morning um, on a pretty remote island once, um, casting and working this big surface pot lure across the water and having, I don't know how many there were, three, four, five, something like that, big, um, what I think were giant trevelli, smashing the lure right behind the lure. I never got a hook up. I was left trembling as these massive fish then swam away. I don't know what I'd have done when I've, I've actually hooked them up, but um, I always chuck in a couple of lures, so a couple of surface poppers, um, soft plastic lures, if you're a pike angler, a perch angler, a bass angler, something like that. Some of these with a couple of hooks. And that's pretty much it. Be realistic. For a few hours fishing, that's all you're gonna need. Bait, if you're staying in a hotel, raid the bread baskets in the morning and get yourself a few handfuls of uh, bread baps before you go at breakfast. Um, you can often, in the local supermarkets and things like that, find little packs of frozen squid or something like that. That can make great bait as well. Um, sometimes you'll find little shellfish, little snails and bits and pieces kind of in the rock pools and you can knock them off and, and turn them to, into a little bit of bait as well. But bread, chuck that on the water um, and you, you'll soon attract a few fish. Word of warning though, um, the marinas, the vast majority of harbours and marinas that I've ever visited around the world, there is no fishing allowed. It will be teeming with fish. It will be the one place on your holiday where you are guaranteed to see a lot of great fish. Chuck a, a, a roll of bread in and watch the mullet erupt in the water. It's so frustrating, but it's kind of great fun watching them at the same time. The last thing that I would add, something that may well be in your suitcase when you go on holiday and could be really helpful, is one of these. Um, Go and have a look, see what's in front of you, see what's in the water. Is it mullet, is it predatory fish where the lure fishing is going to be great? Have a little swim around and see if there's any particular spots where the fish are really close in or something like that. And have a little learn about what's in front of you. It's fascinating going and having a look. I do a lot of this um, here around Cornwall. It's so interesting when you think you understand what a particular fish that you're trying to catch is doing in front of you, then you go and have a look at it and you learn something completely different. So if you can, go and have a swim around and see what you can see. And even with this, Take a roll of bread in your um, in your swimming trunks and chuck that in front of you and watch all the feed fishing in front of your face. Get some photos with your underwater camera as well if you can. So, top tips, be realistic, be limited what, with the amount of tackle that you take, see if you can get your hands on a purpose-made travel rod and don't forget to slap on tons of sun cream because when you're stood by the water in that strong uh, Mediterranean foreign sunshine and wherever you might be, um, don't be the one that goes and gets sunburned because all your mates will laugh at you in the evening. All right, best of luck and have a great holiday. I'll let you know how I get on.